Yes, there are black bears in Pennsylvania, and the Pennsylvania Game Commission has been trapping, processing, and releasing bears across NEPA all summer long. They all get ear tags, and some of them get GPS collars as part of a new study. Hello everyone, and welcome to Go Wild with Discover NEPA. We are in the Gamelands 57 in Wyoming County, and we've been following the Pennsylvania Game Commission and the biology team doing bear research. The goal is to capture as, as many bears as they can and put collars on them. And you may remember in a previous story, we only found bears that were already collared, one that couldn't get a collar, and traps that were, had nothing in them. We finally have a bear that we believe is going to be processed. They start by estimating the weight of the bear so the appropriate amount of drugs could be administered to tranquilize it. We have pretty good results with, with the drugs that we use. We use a combination of drugs that um, are both a muscle relaxer and a disassociative agent, so hopefully they won't hear our noise when we're you know, in there talking and working through the process. But we'll uh, go ahead and start mixing up the drugs, and uh, I'll show you along the way. Graham measures out the two drugs and loads them into the tranquilizing dart. So the way this dart system works, it's called a Dan Inject system. Um, the, the pistol that we use is just used to deliver the dart to the bear. It has nothing to do with the injection of the drug. All that happens right here within the dart. So this is our drug chamber. You can see there's a liquid in there. And then back here is our pressure chamber. We're going to actually add pressure to the dart. And then this little sleeve here keeps the drug inside of that pressurized chamber. Once the dart makes contact with the bear, the, the sleeve slides back and the drug is injected directly into the muscle of the bear. Um, we think it's the most efficient and that's what we prefer to use here in the Northeast. Everything's ready and it's time to tranquilize. Are you aiming for the butt, Graham? What do you aim for? No, so we, we there's typically the most fat deposit on the rump of the bear. Um, so we, we try not to use that unless we absolutely have to. Okay. It is the largest muscle, so it you know might be the easiest to hit. But in this confined environment, we would prefer um, the neck or the front shoulder. Shoulder, gotcha. Um, that, the idea is we want that drug in the, in the muscle rather than the fat Bad. deposit. Good there, do you want it higher? Good there. How long does it usually take to work? Roughly 10 minutes. 10 minutes? This is the uh, GPS collar that we'll hopefully be deploying on this bear. Um, the only reason we wouldn't deploy it is if the bear is too small for the collar. I only have a, a certain size, so if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Um, but we'll just give a quick demo. This is the main GPS unit that will collect those GPS points every hour. Um, and then this is that breakaway that I was talking about earlier. So this right here are the two pins that will fall out mm -hmm. at one year. So this device has a timer in it. And at 365 days from the day this is deployed, it's gonna fall off. Um, additionally, you'll see when we go to attach right here in this area, we put a, a secondary piece of leather. Obviously the mechanical portion of this could fail. Um, that leather is designed to dry rot over time. So that is a secondary method for this collar to come off of the bear at, so that if it grows, basically it doesn't get too tight. And after waiting 10 minutes or so, the bear was out and ready for processing. Get your eye lube and your blindfold ready. So because of the drugs that we use, uh, they, they actually lose their ability to blink and lubricate their eyes. So we add a lubricant during the process to avoid any damage. Graham takes a few measurements to determine if the collar will fit and puts a new tag in the ear. The team is constantly monitoring the bear's heart rate, breathing, and temperature to assure the health of the bear and the handlers. 48 for head circumference and 42 for neck. So right now I'm just fitting the collar, I'm trying to decide how much I'm going to cut off and if it will fit. 
Um, everything we do is based on the head size of the bear rather than like the neck um, because it can be, as long as it can't come off the head of the bear, yeah. then it doesn't need to be tight on the neck of the bear. It's going to be close. Unfortunately, this bear is too small for this collar. Sure. Um, we're not going to be able to attach it. If I had a smaller collar, it would still be a collar candidate. But in this instance, um, I don't have any adult collars for this bear. Gotcha. Yep. But it counts as a capture. It does count as a capture. We replace the tag. We'll get all the measurements that we would normally get. And, you know, it's still a good capture. Just won't be fully enrolled in the survival study as far as the collar goes. So what exactly is the study when you say that it's mortality or? So we're looking at the survival of bears in the state, but it's also going to be used to supplement our uh, population estimate uh, methods. Uh, so currently our mark recapture only method, basically we trap bears, put ear tags in them, and then they either get trapped again or harvested. And we know that at black bear check stations, um, this GPS movement data as well as survival data will be used to supplement that and improve our population estimate. Kevin Winter, the Northeast regional biologist removes a tooth from the bear. Essentially what's going to happen at a lab is they're going to cross section this lengthwise, stain it with a dye, and it's going to evidence rings similar to the way you'd age a tree. So every year the bear spends in a den, calcifies a ring on that tooth, indicates its age. The bear then gets a tattoo on its inside lip. The number coincides with the new ear tag. Ready? The bear is then weighed. It's 99. Yep, actually 99.8, so we'll go 100 on the dot. The process took about 15 minutes. With all of the measurements taken, the bear receives a reversal drug to help it wake up and slowly comes out of it before wandering off. How is our bear population? Um, here in the Northeast, it seems to be good. I'm having no issues finding bears, so um, I, I would say it's good here in the Northeast. Uh, I can't speak for the other regions and how they're doing, but so far we're doing real well up here. The next trap also had a bear in it, and once again, too small for the collar, but good enough for a capture. They processed it, and we are on our way to the next trap. That too had a bear in it. If anybody wants to take a look. What do you got? That's uh, a new adult male. Uh, well, I presume it's an adult male. Uh, we'll know for sure when it comes out, but Good. Uh, based on some scarring on the face and whatnot, probably a male. And once tranquilized and pulled out of the trap, it was determined to be a perfect fit for a GPS collar for this research. He just took the magnet off of it, which is the essentially the on and off switch. Um, we confirmed that the VH the telemetry portion of this collar is now working. So we always check that before they get deployed. That way at least we have that backup to locate them if something were to fail. Okay. So let's just do this quick before we put a plate on it. So that's how it's gonna physically sit on the bear. We'll go ahead and confirm. We can get our fingers in underneath. We can actually get two. So we aren't blocking his breathing. And after all the nuts are tightened. There, that's perfect. All right. Finally a, finally a collar on a bear today. <laughs> that's awesome, man. The rest of the measurements are taken and the bear was put on a scale to weigh it. 264. 264. Feet go my way. Okay, this 264 pound male black bear has a collar. It's all the rest of things have been measured. They're gonna give it a, a drug to wake it up and it's gonna be on its way healthy with a GPS collar so they can learn a lot from it. So this is another episode of Go Wild with Discover NEPA. Be sure to check us out on YouTube and our homepage at discovernepa.com.